Welcome to Motorcycle Memories Stories from the Road, Riding Low and Flying High, Part 3. In Part 2, we weren't able to go flying because Mother Nature had other plans. A few days later, Mike called me and said, are you ready to go flying? I was like, hell yeah! After riding Mike's custom BMWs, I was getting the chance to fly with him in his 1940 Tiger Moth. How cool! Mike, that's making you look incredibly strong by just moving that plane around. <laughs> How much does the moth weigh, Mike? 1,250 pounds. Jeez. So what's it, uh, what are those wings made of? Uh, Sitka spruce uh, is the original wood from 1940. Uh, and then they're covered with fabric. It's uh, fabric? Polyester Acron nowadays it used to be cotton. The uh, cover on the back cockpit, which is where the pilot flies this airplane, <clears throat> that's called a blind flying hood. This was a certified instrument trainer in World War II to train the British pilots. And they, the pilot would put that hood over and learn to navigate just on instruments, crude instruments. The air blows on this when you're flying and you can look out the cockpits how fast you're going. Ah, it's a windy. windy. That's original on the airplane. All the wood on this airplane is original 1940. I didn't have to replace any of it. And it's uh, engine is, you get to the engine right here. And so it's an upside down engine. The cylinder heads are down here on the bottom and the uh, crankshaft is up here hooked to the prop. And it's 6.2 liters, 145 horsepower. And it's called a Gypsy. Gypsy. And it's built by De Havilland, the same company that uh, built the plane. It's uh, steel tubing on the fuselage, wood on the wings. Fuel tank is up at the top, so it's gravity feed. There's no fuel pump or anything, it just runs down. So by doing that, you're getting the oil through, or? I'm emptying the cylinder of uh, any oil that might be in it. Gotcha, if okay. I cranked it, it could bend a rod. Oh, gotcha, okay. It's just like hydro locking your bike when you get it in water. Yeah. But this would be oil lock and got problems. So, noise pull. You show respect to the antique airplane by touching it, okay? okay? And when you pull it through, you're not just pulling it through, you're feeling it. You're feeling the engine, and you're saying hi, okay? You treat it nice, it'll treat you nice. This is known as an Armstrong starter. So you kick your leg out, you want to force yourself back out of the way. You know how friends will ride over or drive by your house? Well, some of Mike's friends do it a little differently when they stop over. One of Mike's friends came by, buzzed the field, and did some aerobatics for us. It was just awesome. We were getting closer and closer to flying time, and I was getting really excited. Mike started going through his checklist, which was a good thing, because there was one thing that was very important that we couldn't go without. So it's a good thing you added the uh, fuel because there was, you know, a minute of flying and then that was going to run out. <laughs> well, the fuel gauges are not accurate on these, so you know, mainly, you know, if I see the cork bounce, I know I can fly for half an hour. I didn't see it bounce. Well, I started feeling and looking like the Red Baron for this flight. Uh, 5,400 oh. some hours of flying. 5,000 hours. I've had about 2,200 people in the front seat of this one. There's a handhold right here, Chad. Yep, oh, yep. Yeah. Both feet in the seat. Yep. Hold on to that other strut. Yep. We'll step in, yeah. Good. 
Cozy? Are you scared? No, not yet. When the engine starts... He doesn't starts, know me very well, does he? Ah, uh, be fine. When the engine starts, <laughs> I'd like to change my mind. <laughs> okay, clear prop. Clear. Clear prop. Do you know those first time experiences that you have in life that you never forget? Well, this was going to be one for me. Airplanes were a part of my life starting in 1963. Now, I, I learned to fly when I was eight years old with my dad, so dad, I was dad. always around the airplane thing. He just did it for a hobby, and uh, he was a retired Air Force pilot, oh, Army okay. Air Corps. So he enlisted the day after Pearl Harbor, but he had a passion for it. And his license, which I've got back there, signed by Earl the Wright. Next thing you know, did a little flying with him and taking the stick. Yeah. And, and uh, he's flying an open cockpit, old Ryan military trainer. He can make it do anything. And so, of course, I'm up there. We're about 5,000 feces. But you can do anything you want to do. I think by that time I was maybe 13 or something. And I'm in the front seat holding the stick, and we're up there flying around the clouds. And whatever I did worried him. <laughs> Because I had it upside down and spinning really fast. And I had no idea. And I, all I remember is my hand stung. He took the stick away from me yep. so hard. And the last airplane he restored, he donated to the Udvar Hazy um, Air and Space Museum. He flew it around and then he donated it to the um, Air and Space Museum. It's hanging oh. above the Concorde right now. It has oh, yeah. name on it. But I think I've owned about 65 airplanes. I'm a private pilot. I've got about 5,500 hours of fun flying. Dad always said, don't fly if the birds aren't. Huh? Don't fly if you're not going to have fun. I also do aerobatics. My dad taught me how to fly upside down and do all the stunts. And uh, I do that routinely in this airplane, or pretty much any airplane I fly. So, so you got two-wheel yoga. And then you've got your plane. So is it the same or is it a different therapy? You're never fully relaxed. You shouldn't ever be fully relaxed when you're flying if you're the pilot. Yeah. you got to always think the engine's going to quit right now. Where'd I go? Eight times. Wow. Really? I've lost eight engines. Wow. And not, it, not because of something I did, but I've lost eight engines just through anomalies. And you got to find a place to land. As far as flying yoga that doesn't really happen but what does happen is the way I look at it number one I thank the Almighty for letting me have opportunities and blessings that have let me get to where I'm going I like to pass that on when I can So that was just incredible, absolutely incredible. I feel like an ace. I, I feel like I can fly now for, for sure. At least I felt like a bird. That was just amazing. That's uh, the goal. And, and how fast are we going? Like 800 miles an hour? Uh, as slow as 30 and as fast as 115. That was incredible. Miles per hour. It's so nimble too. Yeah. Just, it, you feel like you're floating. You, uh, it's, it's as close to having wings as you can get. Oh, that was just great. All the wood, everything in the airplane was 1940. Vintage. 1940. It's all original. And, you, and you've redone it? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I finished it up in 2000, so. Yeah. Lots of loops, lots yeah. of fun. That was awesome. That, yeah, that was a Had surprise. Had you ever done a loop? No, I've never done a loop. Never Normally, done. I ask, but I figured with the coat and the helmet, you well, were ready. Yeah, you know, I was trying to fit in. I thought yeah, this was yeah. a good look. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really nice little barnstormer loop there. That was and, just uh, incredible. That was awesome. So it's a best looping airplane I've ever owned. This one? Yeah. It, it loops really nice. And, uh, well, that was a first for me. I've never done a bi-wing or an open cockpit, so that was a first. Oh, well, good. Good. Uh, uh, you're, I've had a lot of people up the front seat say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I've never had anyone come out and have an ear-to-ear -ear smile. Oh, I know. But well, guess it's, what? It's a part I of your career. I do, too. Yeah. What I tell people, I got to go for a ride, too, and I just as much fun as you did. Yeah, uh, I was so, just incredible. Every time.
I love the view. We got a beautiful day. Thank you. Know, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. It worked out. So once again, thank you for okay. everything. <laughs> uh, I, I'm looking forward to sharing your story with you. Oh, everyone. sure. It's no problem at all. And uh, I take a lot of rides all summer, so if somebody shows up. There you go, right? And it's not soggy. We're going. That's awesome. So, awesome. Thanks again. Oh, you're welcome. Take care. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank Mike and Mamie for their warm hospitality and allowing me to share in such a memorable experience. Flying in an original 1940 Tiger Moth biplane as well as getting on and experiencing Mike's custom BMWs, it was an amazing memory and a wonderful story that I'm happy to share with you. Thanks again, Mike. I want to thank the BMW Motorcycle Owners of America for their support of Motorcycle Memories. The MOA is doing exciting things to help BMW riders make their own motorcycle memories. I also want to thank you for watching Motorcycle Memories Stories from the Road. Please share these videos with your friends. Stay tuned for a very special Motorcycle Memories Stories from the Road where we remember and honor some Gold Star families.